Well, as you can see over here, there are no LEDs showing on this Lynx distributor. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid, and in this episode we are going to take you through the process to uh, build a very simple uh, solution to get these LEDs to work. So this is the uh, Lynx distributor, and normally you would attach to this a Lynx uh, shunt, and uh, the Lynx shunt would power uh, this device. Uh, there's nothing powering it at the moment, and we've chosen to use the uh, less expensive uh, smart shunt. This is the Victron smart shunt, and this thing costs around just over a hundred pounds, whereas a Lynx uh, shunt would cost about two or three times that. So very, very good system. It works great. We just don't have any LEDs here. So let's open it up and have a look. So as you can see, we have LEDs, but this little circuit board here is not powered up. It actually needs some power, and uh, this is where the power comes in. At, um, so these are so that you can daisy chain them, and that's where you would apply the power. These little grey cables come with the Lynx distributor, and uh, they plug in over here. So, and uh, you can use them to daisy chain several Lynx distributors if you have lots of devices to connect more than we have. So we need to apply, essentially we need to apply USB type power, so 5 volts uh, into this here. So we're going to use this cable and make up something so that we can go from 12 volts from these two terminals powering into here to get these LEDs to work. The reason that you want these LEDs working is because uh, when everything is fine, so when all four fuses are in place and intact, this LED here will be green which is great, that shows that everything's fine. As soon as one of these uh, fuses is not working or missing, then we'll, this will go amber or, or red, I can't remember which, and uh, the LED at the fuse will also light up so that you know exactly which fuse has gone. One of the nice things about the Lynx distributor is that when a fuse goes, you see it straight away. You, you see, let's go amber or red, and then the fuse lights up as well. So one of the reasons why you'd want to use one of these. So let's get to it and make up a power cable using this gray cable that they supplied. Right, so to um, make up this cable, we are going to use the following components. So well, we've got a soldering iron, chosen to solder the wires, they're quite thin wires and we want a good contact, so we'll solder them. So we've got a soldering iron with some soldering wire, uh, the usual side cutters, the uh, wire strippers, we've got two bits of uh, heat shrink, these are adhesive heat shrink, small bits, and then non-adhesive heat shrink just to shroud everything. Um, this is the cable supplied by uh, Victron, and finally, uh, we have bought this uh, in the UK. We bought it from a supplier of Raspberry Pi equipment. And basically, what this thing does is that you pass in 12 volts on this side, and it comes out as 5 volts on this side. So it's very simple, two wires, positive and, and negative, and on this side coming out 5 volts, positive and negative. So first thing we're going to do is uh, the unthinkable, just take your cable and roughly halfway and you cut it, put the one half away for a rainy day and uh, that leaves you with this half a cable. So let's go ahead and strip a really nice big chunk of this. So as you can see, we have four wires going through to here. And actually what we are interested in <coughs> are only the two outside wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend these two inner wires. So we are interested in the yellow and the black wires. The, the red and the green uh, we are simply going to cut away, leaving us with these two, yellow and black. I'm going to strip these. Okay, those are stripped down. Then, as I said, this is your input and this is your output. So I'm just going to take the last little bit, cut this off, this we'll discard. Uh, 
And again, we will open up, we need to open up enough of these so that we've got space for our heat shrink. And again, strip these, similar to the other one. This wire is curving a little bit, so let's straighten it out, get it into the stripper. There we are, and that's ready to go. So, black to black. I'm just going to turn it. Uh, you know what I forgot? I always forget this. Let's get the heat shrink on first. So we need the black heat shrink for the black wire. Let's get my specs so that I can actually see properly. Okay, a bit of black heat shrink goes there. And the red heat shrink, we'll put this on now, but we could have done it later. It goes there. And we are going to put the shroud of non-adhesive heat shrink over all of this. There we are. Right, let's try again. So we join black to black. Just turn it on a little bit there. And then I am Let's check the soldering on. You can feel the heat coming from it, so we know it's on and working properly. I'm just going to bring something to <clears throat> keep the solder on, just makes it easier. Bring the soldering on. Heat this up. Right. That's soldered, that's good contact. So then we do um, red to yellow. That should work. And again, we get it under us. I'm going to move my fingers away a little bit because the wires do get hot eventually. That should be good. Turn the soldering iron off. I'm just going to take these, they have quite long bits, so I'm just going to take the ends off to neaten them. Right, so now we have the two wires soldered on. Happy with that. Let's take the, uh, the red heat shrink and then the black heat shrink. That's the two bits of heat shrink. Get the heat gun. Right, and put this over. In. Okay, now we obviously to attach this to those two bolts, we're going to need to bear these and apply a lug of sorts. Right, on this side I've got these two wires. I'm going to uh, first actually attach this with a bit of heat shrink as well. So 
So I, I want to fuse this. Um, always a good idea to fuse everything. So I'm going to fuse this one. What I'll need to do again to bear this a little bit. That didn't work. Um, put the uh, little bit of heat shrink on there. Right, let's see if this is hot enough now. Right, so we have an inline fuse here, and we just need the lugs. So this is the finished cable. Got a negative lug, positive lug with an inline fuse coming to the little adapter, 12 volts in, and five volts at three amps coming out, coming to our plug that will plug into the Lynx distributor. So let's go and put it in. I'm going to attach um, positive there, negative there, bring the cable around under here, down through here and into this plug. So let's start by first feeding this through. I just want to get to right that, and I will feed it back down there and just keep it on standby. And at this end here, let's bring this up. So we have these attached. No, we're just going to try and neaten these up. We just push these to one side. Probably get a cable tie and tie it up, but for the time being, this should work. And we need to put this in, and the little tab goes at the back. There we are, we have some LEDs and it's gone completely green. So saying if I was to take one of these fuses out or if it was to blow, then straight away uh, this will go red or amber and it'll show that this fuse is actually blown. You can see each fuse has its own LED. You would have caught that as we plugged it in and it powered up, you would have seen that. 
So in case you missed that, let me just take it back out again and push it back in and then you'll see. Okay, we've now, there's no more power. And when I push it back in, see, you've got the various fuses there. But at the moment we're on nice and green. Uh, I'll tidy this up later, but in the meantime, if we put this back on, you can see that the green is showing quite clearly. And if for those were to blow, you'd see quite clearly which one has actually blown. Right, so LEDs are showing now. Just a handy thing to, to have them. Why, why would you not have the LEDs working? And hopefully that's helpful for you to make your own cable. Thanks, folks. Cheers. I forgot to mention we will put all the links down below so if you want to buy these things then you know where to go.